Today, we would like to talk about the prison industrial complex. Our group found out that mass incarceration and the corresponding privatization and industrialization of prison systems created a new way of exploiting the value of individual labor and providing substantial economic benefits to a small group of people. Such prison systems also encourage judicial and law enforcement agencies to throw more people behind the bars. Let us cast our eyes back in the post-Civil War area. Prisoners in mass incarceration were heavily loaned out to private companies. Most of them were African Americans. So incarceration also inherited some of the exploitative qualities of slavery. Let us look at some more charts, and we can see that in the 1970s, something happened. Due to the conservative phase in the punitive de deterrent of the law and the prevalence of racism, Nixon started start the trend, declaring a war on drugs and justifying it with speeches about being tough on crime. When Reagan took office in the 1980s, the total prison population was 329,000, and when he left, left office 80 years later, the prison population had essentially doubled to 627,000. With this dramatic increase, federal and state prisons have limited capacity. It also led to the development of privatization of prisons. Prison privatization began in the early 1980s. The first private prison company in the United States was CCA, now known as Core Civic. The prison system's reliance on privatization is rising sharply. The number of federal prisoners held in private prisons rose 120% from 2000 to 2016, while the number of state prisoners incarcerated privately grew by 31% over the same time period from 71,845 to 94,164. With the economic downturn of the 1980s, America entered the industrialization process. Major corporations led to third world country for low wage workers and avoid dealing with unions. The loss of manufacturing jobs has hit rural communities and the rural economy harder than the rest of the country. Together with farm crisis, and cooperation downsizing, millions are left without income. The rural community was seriously harmed, turning many to candidates for prison. However, to remedy the social problems and depressed economy, the acquisition of prison was used as a strategy. According to a study conducted by the Institute of Justice, incarceration grew the most in small countries by around seven times, compared to three times in large countries. Some of the most oppressed rural areas in the United States have had significant infusion of prisons and prison work. Economic professionals, politicians, and prison officials see prison as a savior of the rural economy. Former Pennsylvania Attorney General says it is policy in Pennsylvania to pursue prisons as economic stimulation for depressed rural areas. A California Department of Correction officer states that Prisons not only stabilize a local economy, but can in fact rejuvenate it. There are no seasonal fluctuations, it is a non-polluting industry, and in many circumstances, it is virtually invisible. However, evidence suggests that prison in rural areas doesn't function as they've claimed. Only 20% of prison jobs go to the local community. Under fierce competition, the jobs are taken by city residents and prisoners themselves. The hidden cost of doing prison business can be high for many small communities and can also discourage other kinds of economic development. As prison increased the amount of nitrates dumped on a daily basis, taxes rose because of loans to build the sewage plant. But there is no doubt that growth in prison population has brought benefit to the same cooperation that migrated and benefited from economic domination in the third world, such as IBM and General Electric and many others. Through our research, we have analyzed the history behind the prison industrial complex and how it has increased in the past few decades and what enabled that increase to happen. Our data shows how it not only negatively impacts incarcerated people, but also local economies. The continuation of building 
the private prisons incentivizes agencies outside the communities to keep people incarcerated. We must look towards different ways to build up economies. We must also reevaluate laws that keep massive amounts of people incarcerated. For example, the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994, also known as the Three Strikes Year Out provision. This act allowed governments and states to give harsher punishments to repeat offenders. While recently reformed by Proposition 36, in California, the three strike law disproportionately and negatively impacted nonviolent offenders as well as African Americans who ended up making 45% of the prison population. Revising these laws, or even better, preventing laws like this to get passed in the first place is crucial to, ke- to help end the prison industrial complex.